Hello there my beautiful people and welcome to the serenity of this forest. <laughs> this is one of my patrons and one of my good friends Nemanja. Hello, and greetings everyone. And I would like to have him today in my video to discuss a little bit about the role of the player within the party. So sometimes the player has distinct roles other than their class roles. It's usually remarks to how the player interacts with their environment. So it's either social interaction or some sort of physical interaction like climbing, jumping, swimming. But everyone's got a part to play in the greater scheme. Yeah, of course. And choosing what your player character will be is going to take you to the next level of the game, thanks to the DM, of course. The thing is that you're either gonna choose a, a roleplay heavy character or a combat heavy character. Both of them have their roles to play inside the game, inside the campaign. But depending on your personal preference, let's take a look at what would you like to have rather than uh, what would be given to you by the DM. The common roles like uh, DPS, tank, uh, crowd control, damage per second characters. Yeah, support. Uh, yeah, yeah, support characters, boosters, healers and such. Skill monkeys as well. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, so let's talk about those guys. I'm playing a DPS character, a ranged DPS character, and Nemanja is playing... It's a wizard that's pretty much like, well, a crowd control wizard? No, mostly a crowd control wizard with a lot of sort of um, area denial spells like Firewall, Conjure Pit, but more recently I focused on some evocation too because we've yeah. been fighting some lower level minions and the best way to, way to count crowd control sometimes is to kill the enemies before they play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that's exactly where my characters come to play as well. Um, I'm basically the only stealthy guy within uh, the party and, well, sometimes I just go and scout most of the times because, uh, you know, these guys, him and another player, they're just doing, um, you know, uh, the damage Within, within the area. Yeah, but the most important part of a wizard character, I'd say, is the wizard's ability to manipulate the environment. So the things, the spells we focused on mostly in the mid to late game were plane shifts and teleports, which are irreplaceable for certain types of campaign. Yeah. They provide the party a great amount of mobility, they extend your base of influence, Exactly. And uh, the entire party gets to go wherever they'd like. It's just very convenient. Yeah, for instance, uh, I like to make my character both combat heavy and roleplay heavy. Uh, well, let's say combat medium and roleplay medium, because uh, I'm not all that much into combat and I'm all, not all that much into the roleplay. But um, the thing is that um, sometimes um, there there are some moments where I have to simply go and delve into the game further than I would initially like to. For instance, um, some time ago a DM uh, told me that I have a son within the game, so <laughs> what better moment to start your role play than that? And uh, I, was, uh, I based my character to be combat heavy, first and foremost, because I didn't want to take uh, too much time in troll play. I just wanted to have uh, fun. I thought that we we're gonna play it for not a lot of time. But um, yeah, I made it combat heavy as I said, but uh, on the other hand, the role play moment became more emotional for me. And that's why I love those role playing moments as well as the, as the combat it itself. So yeah, if you're gonna play a dungeon crawl, go for whatever, uh, greatest damage or uh, greatest uh, damage intake uh, you can have or if you're going to play a campaign that's gonna last like a year or so yeah do your character some justice by uh, implementing some uh, quirks some traits some uh, uh, habits and things like that yeah anything you can do to enrich your character usually flaws are a rich tapestry to build your character on because uh, a well role-played flaw 
will sometimes add a lot more character to of the course. campaign and to the character himself. Yeah, we, uh, we were discussing about that uh, when we were reading through mm -hmm. the Black Void. Precisely. Uh, yeah, and uh, within the Black Void you get, to, you get to choose your flaws and choosing your flaws actually brings a big, big flavor to the game. Uh, you don't have to, but to my opinion and to Nemanja's opinion as well, it's uh, it's really flavorable. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Yeah. And uh, you know, sometimes you know, every every one of us can play the you know the John Stewart, the Mary Sue, or whatever <laughs> character yeah. where you're just strong and you're absolutely destroying everyone, but your character lacks that little something something. Maybe that little something something is getting drunk in a tavern recklessly because your character would like to do that even if they're not in the most hospitable of circumstances but they let their character and their flaws carry the role play element okay this was i think the first time in my life that i wasn't the one who thought of the background story for my character it was my dm but i developed that background story uh into something bigger something further than that <laughs> he told us that all of us have a tragic backstory, like uh, we're all orphans or something like that. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I don't know about your character. Oh yeah, also. my character was uh, basically, I started off well, I was like, I was the self who wanted to learn new ways of magic because <coughs> we're basically aliens on Galarian, been gone for a long yeah. time. And then I get, um, I'm the apprentice of a human mage because I'm learning some human magic. All right. And the uh, tragic element there is that he gets assassinated, the tower gets right. destroyed. I'm forced to run away and use disguises. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so you get it. Getting the flavor of your character uh, through through the background story and through the role play within the campaign is pretty much what you will want to. When, um, when you're uh, playing a long-term campaign, unlike one-shots or dungeon crawls, when you just go go into the dungeon and kill some monsters, yeah, or yeah, whatever, just, just fly in there and kill anything you find, yeah, which is sometimes fun. I mean, just of course, just let's roll up a dungeon run is a great way to just sort of chill out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. The, there are some one-shots that are very. Um, interesting to say the least but uh, the thing with with the role play no matter which role you choose um, okay uh, skill monkeys and face characters are more um, role play oriented the rest of them are pretty much combat oriented or should oriented. I say uh, perhaps you should focus on filling up the difference maybe in your party maybe not so much because yes overlapping skills can be a good thing you can aid another or uh, it, providing if your party has split, one of the characters that with a high intimidate check, let's say a fighter, yeah. can easily negotiate something with a, a local tavern bouncer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while um, the face of the party, perhaps the rogue, who also has intimidate, can negotiate an underground deal while this is happening. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and also, you know, um, speaking of the background story and, and the foreground story, um, you get to have all different sorts of role play elements that you can incorporate. For instance, you can, if you're a rogue, as Nemanja said just previously, you can ask your DM to have some connections within the underworld, or, uh, you know, uh, for your little um, side story, side quest to be to find the connections within the underworld or make the connection between you know uh, the rich folk and the underworld or the slums and the rich folk or something like that you know precisely anywhere the, the money will take you the thing about role-playing a character is um, having yourself shift into another human or, or another creatures um, psyche, another creature's brain. Extend your uh, vision, extend your perception on the other uh, people, on the other creatures, on uh, how could uh, somebody develop if they had a different backstory or how could somebody develop through the campaign or through the story that your DM is running. It is an excellent exercise of the imagination. Exactly. An excellent exercise of um, 
you know, being better <laughs> people's person <laughs> yeah. as well. You learn reading people and uh, I've learned a lot of social cues from Dungeons and Dragons. Of course, playing through uh, all different role play uh, gets you to have um, all different sorts of uh, experiences, not live, but within the game. Your DM is going to be the one who will be Providing opposing, conflict. Yeah, providing conflict, opposing you. Solving that conflict within the game could be the way that you solve the conflict out of the game. Precisely. Sometimes it's fun to do something you wouldn't do in real life. For instance, I certainly wouldn't want to try and intimidate a bouncer of a nightclub. <laughs> of course. But my half-orcish character with 20 strength <laughs> definitely might. Yeah, of course. I mean, we didn't develop intimidation skills, neither of us within our lives but uh, yeah intimidating somebody within the game uh, gets to give you that experience i think we pretty much covered it all so uh yeah as i said nemini is one of my patrons <laughs> you can go to my patreon page i have some uh, extra content for my patrons that i, I publish uh, not often but once a week at least and um yeah, there is my Instagram and Facebook, you can follow me there as well. Sharing this video would also help a lot. Sharing any of the videos would help a lot to help this channel grow and if you like what we speak about here, just give me a thumbs up and there will be more content, I promise you. Precisely. Yeah. And also look forward to the new option of joining uh, Pedja in the forest as a Patreon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So until the next time I bid you Farewell. Farewell.